Something you'll find if you vend long enough, especially if you're vending full time for years, is that you're going to run into people who have acquired a lot of stuff and just have no need for it or have no desire to work with it anymore, especially in the crafting areas. And they will sell you or give you a ton of their old stuff. And so this lady, her name is Kate. She just wanted to be known as Kate. She came by last week, uh, a couple weeks ago, and said, come by my house. I have so much stuff to give you, but you can only come by at this these exact hours when I know I'll be home and my husband will be home. I thought, oh, that's right in the middle of the selling day. I could lose sales, but you know what? I'm not going to look generosity in the eye and complain. So I made the truck out there, and I can't begin to tell you she had the most amazing craft room with just shelves and boxes and tables and shelves and boxes all organized perfectly beautifully clean and then she just started loading up boxes of stuff and like containers of stuff ziploc baggies full of stuff and handing me hundreds of dollars worth of stuff not even sure i can use three quarters of it but just the one quarter i definitely can use is amazing I want to show you guys some of this so just these stones alone some of these stones are just if you could just see some of the colors in here I just wish the light and the focus could catch it at the same time they are just so beautiful I don't even know what this one is it might be some type of dyed jasper but a lot of these are they're just all natural stones um, all completely just completely raw undrilled so it would be fun challenging the, a lot of these are cabochons cabochon meaning it has like a flat back a rounded top so it's made for setting or special type of wrapping but um, I don't know what most of these even are I mean you can tell me in the comments if you know some I, I can guess what half of them are but these are just gorgeous stones. And I'm telling you, the, these stones are n like not even one tenth of the supplies. She gave me spools and spools of wire, reams of beads, so many beads. And I'm starting to think, I have a Facebook group you guys should join. This Facebook group has, um, where you can post your own art that you make. It's Matt's Crazy Art. Put in Matt's Crazy Art group in the search when you get to Facebook, in the search bar under Facebook. Matt's Pr Crazy Art, put in the word group. Otherwise, you'll get the Facebook page where I just repost these same videos, which you can join that too if you're on Facebook. But the group is where you can join and you can post your own pieces. I'd like to talk to the people in the group right now it would be so fun if we could have everybody who has extra craft items and art items sitting in their basement, in their attic, in their craft room that they know they're not going to use. Um, if we could all get together and have a meetup and just put all our stuff on tables and then just trade and just make it like, you know, take some, bring some, you, you bring some. Look at this. This is, this is um, rainbow fluorite. It's a purple and green um, kind of translucent marble look but I, I've never seen it in this shape that's a really unique shape it's like a it's like half of a kind of a teardrop and then with sharp ends on that side really cool um so we could put all these on tables and just have people maybe trade or maybe just say bring you know put down everything that you uh don't need and other people could just take whatever they can use and I think we could all save hundreds of dollars and also just bless other people but I told her I'm definitely, you know, she said, just pay it forward. And I said, I'm definitely going to be making some pieces for people that I'm just going to have giveaways. Um, she only asked that I make one, take one Labradorite uh, oval and make her a piece with that. That's all she asked. And um, I'm definitely going to do that for her. You know, just one piece, wrap it in some silver and have her come pick it up. But um, this isn't even, like... This isn't even half the stones. Look at, what is that? What is that? This one's definitely dyed, but look, look at the patterns in that. I mean, the patterns are natural. This is like, look at the, 
look at some of the crystal formation in that. I mean, this this one, honestly, the only thing that makes it, when I say it's dyed, it would naturally be more like this. Um, it just has the pink added to give it a really bright look. Um, but it's it's still like a, a beautiful stone. Here's the same thing with like with like a teal green color added. But look at look at those crystal formations. This is definitely Tiger's Eye or Tiger's Iron. Tiger's Iron has a little more black in it, a little more iron added. That one's all natural, I'm pretty positive. As is this one. Let's show you how bright that looks in better light. I believe this is agate. I believe this is dyed howlite. Look at that giant chunk though. Can you imagine? Can you imagine wrapped in silver how beautiful that would look? Like this is this is like this is a big piece. Look at the size of that compared to my finger. There's more picture jasper. I think see, I think picture jasper, I think when they take this natural stone and add like a pink or green dye, they get these really pretty outcomes. Some kind of agate again. Uh, some kind of something. Maybe agate again. Look at look at that. That's I think that might be glass. Blown glass. That's a bead. More beauty. That's a, a hand hand blown uh, glass pendant. Not sure what that is. It's really pretty. Might just be another agate. Agate comes in pretty much every color and pattern you can think of, as does Jasper. The only difference, it's not always the case, but tends to be the difference between Jasper and Agate. Agate is a little more translucent, and Jasper has a little more crazy patterns, like it's some kind of abstract painting, like lines, and. but that's not always the case. Sometimes you need a geologist to really know what you're looking at. That one is just, like, there's that pattern again with the half moon. The half oval and then the sharp, so it's a really cool pattern. I think that's more blown glass. Let's get a good look at that. Look at the colors in that. I think I showed you that one in the beginning. This Labradorite, look at the flash on this. That's a, a gray green stone. Like, look at the rainbow that jumps across it when the light hits it. It has a little chip there, but I can I can uh, file that down. Maybe file the other corners to match. Make a cool piece. Here's another Labradorite. These aren't even the ones she asked me to make or something with. These are just ones I get to do anything I want with. This is, this is related to Tiger's Eye, I think. But the ba Tiger's Eye definitely has stripes, like straight line banding. And this is more foggy, but it has the same look and the same color bending in the light. It's really cool. This is beautiful. That just looks like like desert layers of, of stone just built up over centuries. So cool. That looks a little too peachy pink. I feel like maybe there's dye added, but no, that could be all natural. Really, really cool. Look at the scaling of the, the crystal crystallization. That's definitely dyed, but it's gorgeous. Absolutely. Look at the colors on that. Look at it's like a like an oil painting, like it's like an oil painting of the ocean or something. Alien landscape. It's more agate. It's like a carnelian look almost. Pretty sure it's agate, but it has a, the definite colors of carnelian. Anyway, you guys tell me if there's some stones I got wrong or, you know, put a timestamp and say at this second, uh, the stone was this name. If you see any, you really identify. And um, the, the boxes and boxes of beads she gave me beyond this are just insane. The amount, I mean, I know I can make get some little kids to bead some bracelets with some of the prettier ones that I don't use as much, but I don't know if I'll ever go through half of these. And again, if you guys have any ideas for how we could trade, um, obviously we could do it virtually. We could put a, put a group on Facebook and put our photos of everything and trade, but 
trade like by saying, you know, I'll take this, I'll take that. But then if you have to mail stuff, that defeats the whole purpose, all that mailing costs. Plus, there's nothing like touching it in your hand and picking it up and really seeing the beauty for what it looks like. But, again, um, I just want to show you guys. There's some beautiful, beautiful stones out there. And it, a lot of these stones uh, back in the day would go for hundreds of dollars each. Nowadays, you can get them for... 10, 20, 30 bucks each. And if you really look and you narrow it down online, you can get them for much, much, much less. Sometimes you can't even tell by looking at how pretty a stone, what, what, what the cost really is. You'd think, oh, that's a $30 stone and you could get it somewhere for $3 literally or $2. And it looks prettier than another stone someone paid a hundred for. So don't be intimidated by this. Don't be like, oh, I, I could never afford that. Or I wish somebody would gift me some stones because I, they're so out of my price range. You'd be surprised what you can afford and some of the beautiful stuff out there. Check out Amazon. Check out AliExpress.com. Um, just, just do some searching and talk to other artists. The biggest takeaway of this whole video is what I said on the video, how to sell your art. And you should watch that video if you haven't. Um, just type that entire thing into your search bar if you don't mind put my name at the bottom because that way you'll get my definite video and not somebody else's idea on how to sell your art which is obviously going to be horrible and lead you astray but um the biggest number one thing i say in that video is make artist friends and even more than making artist friends if you want to sell art make vending friends they don't have to sell art some of the best sellers who have the best shows who could tell you where to get the best locations to sell your stuff. They don't sell art. They sell, they retail stuff. They buy stuff from thrift stores. They buy stuff directly from overseas and just resell it. But they have found the angles on the best shows for selling, the best tips for selling, the best displays for selling. They will be your best friends. You want to find these friends in your area whatever you, if you want to stay local find find vendors who, who sell their stuff local if you want to branch out and go on the road find people you can share a space with share the driving with share a share a hotel or whatever um, but this is by building a community this is how you're gonna bump into people who are gonna be like I want to gift you some beautiful things um, and this, this is like probably one of the most generous gifts I've ever, you know, I've, I've gotten really amazing gifts from people. I've been having people send me stuff um, from this channel, beautiful stuff. And, um, and I'm looking forward to more uh, people are, are saying, you know, not that I ask, but it's just when you make a community of people, like you can't outgive them. You try to give and give and give and they're just going to give you back more. And that's what's so super awesome it's kind of a kind of a study in life you really can't outgive life um there's someone once said some very wise person once said is more blessed to give than to receive and it's it's a principle like the more you give the more of a the more of an authority you become like the more the more you give of your time the more you give of your abilities the better you get at life like giving is a is a exercise that makes you more strong than than the recipient. You actually gain more than the recipient because it makes you a bigger person in character and that makes your life happier and wider and deeper and richer. And and then there's no way you're going to end up giving and giving and giving without other people just giving back. It just starts happening because that's just the nature of life. Um, when you're surrounding yourself with people that you want to give good stuff to, eventually they just can't help it. They want to give you good stuff to. And you meet other people who want to give you good stuff that you that are just total strangers. Even if you're like, I did nothing for you. And they say, I don't care. I want to give you good stuff. Anyway, have a wonderful evening, guys.